Hey everybody, welcome back to Target Forge. Today we got something a little different for you. We're gonna go through the setup of one of Orion the Iguana Hunter's 3D printed adapters for the Hawkeye Firefly 8SE. Everybody wants better footage through the scope. I don't think I'm alone in that. Uh, it looks so cool when you can get a great slow-mo slow shot through the optic of your choice and share that online or wherever. I'm no different. We actually use our footage here to prove out targets and see where they fail and things like that. So it's important to us to have good quality. And the GoPro solution for the side shot is quite frankly, pretty expensive. So today we're gonna to take a look at uh, Orion's solution and how we got it to work for our installation. So. I'm going to start out with some footage on the modifications that he doesn't show you in his video and how to get that product adapted to your side shot. So we'll go to that right now. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a look at some of the stuff that we've got here that we've waited forever to get from China. We've got two batteries here. Um, they come in this box. I took this one out. It's just in a, uh, in a Ziploc bag. They look uh, quite a lot like early GoPro batteries. I don't know if they're a match or not, but anyway, that's what they look like. Put those aside for now. We've got a memory card. You, the camera does not come with a memory card, so you're going to need one of those. This is the mount from Orion. It's got his name proudly embossed in there everywhere. He's very proud of these, apparently. Um, this is a little spacer on here that needs to go in between this adapter and the side shot, so we'll need to include that. But we'll get to that part. I'm jumping ahead of myself. Let's open this box up the moment we've all been waiting for. This is the Firefly 8 SE. And make sure when you order this, that you get the unit with the 90 millimeter lens. You want the narrow one, not the 170, which is the wide angle. Apparently for this to work properly, that is important. So behold, all of its Chinese goodness. Um, we actually don't need anything in here yet, uh, actually at all. Uh, everything we need is going to be right here. So here's the camera. And uh, I, all I gotta say, it's um, pretty decent quality for what you pay, I have to say. Um, not bad value. But let's get into the modifications as Orion tells us to do. All righty, first thing we're gonna do is liberate this camera from its case. And take a look at it and remove the plastic protective screen there. First thing we're going to do is get a memory card in here. This is a very good 128 gigabyte uh, card that we're going to put in here. And okay, so we're going to try and go through the menus here and see what's up. Video resolution. Let's try the high resolution at 120 frames per second. That's what Orion had it set at. Uh, field of view, pretty sure we want narrow. Motion detect is off. Uh, we do not want a watermark. We definitely want quick capture enabled so that it comes on and begins filming immediately. Don't 
Don't want the image rotated. Now I tried to get these one of these cameras to work with my phone with the app from Firefly and I, I couldn't get it to pair with Bluetooth or Wi-Fi because I was going to try and go that route rather than modify the case the way that um, Orion did in order to get the HDMI signal out but I'm just going to use the HDMI signal as he did and he had a earlier revision of firmware too um, his is 115 in his video mine is 117 interestingly when I went to the website to check this they only had the 115 version so apparently this came with such new firmware on it that the website doesn't even have it but that's it for the camera settings and I think we're pretty much done with it for now I'm going to turn it back off and put it aside now we're going to get into the changes to the case now one of the things that he does is he removes this water seal around the edge based on the premise that he doesn't believe that you're going to be doing any target shooting with your expensive PCP or your expensive scope in the rain I, I tend to agree this does make the make the lid close much easier puts less stress on this latch so I'm going to do as he did the other thing that he doesn't show is the removal of this seal uh, and this plate around here this needs to come out and the screwdriver I have even this little one is still too big so I'm going to step away for one second and I'll be back and get a smaller screwdriver okay here we go there is the lens cover and the seal and we'll drop the screws out the other side now one of the things that Orion does point out to us is that these holes are too small for the screws for his adapter they measure 0.1, 18, 17, somewhere around there, 0. 0. 0.117 inches. Uh, I just happen to have a 1 8 drill bit right here. He uses a 3 millimeter. I think we're going to be close enough with 1 8. And we have to drill out this housing right here. So we're just going to drill these holes right through. I'll tell you one thing I notice is that these holes really are close to that sidewall um, so I'm not sure how his fastener solution is going to work but we're going to trust that it's good and we're going to keep moving forward so the next issue that we run into with his modifications is that in order for us to get to this HDMI port right there actually right there is the HD that's USB um, we need to blow a hole in the side of this case so he just kind of gnawed his out I'm going to try and be a little more purposeful and I'm going to use a center punch and mark a hole right here and another one right here pretty much the same distance away from this wall as good as it needs to be I'm going to remove the camera so I don't drill into the side of it 
And with that same 1 8 drill bit, I am just going to run these holes all the way through. I'm really applying very light pressure here because I don't want to crack this or cause any more harm than I need to. Okay, two pilot holes. I'm going to change bits, get rid of the regular twist drill. Now I'm going to put in a step drill. And I really, really like step drills for plastics. And I really like them for sheet metal. Uh, because they make a much better hole in those two materials than a twist drill does, especially when the diameter gets larger. So what we're going to do is just going to create a little radius for an oval slot. So one hole up on the top. One, two, three. One, two, three. There we go. All right, we got some slots. And now all we're gonna do is take this Dremel saw and we're gonna connect these two together so that we end up with a nice oval slot. The trick with um, using a Dremel saw on plastic like this is to drop that speed down. When I turn this on, it's gonna wind all the way up and then we'll slow that blade down so it doesn't melt as much. going to get my handy dandy deburring tool and just kind of get that big molten burr out of there. And I've got a little bit of a flat spot right there. I could file that or I could just come back in with the saw blade and clean that up a little bit more. That's more better. Now, if you don't have a Dremel and step drills and all that stuff, you can do it exactly the same way he did. Uh, I think he did his with like a soldering gun or something. He just melted that away. That's fine. I mean, we're really not. We've already violated the waterproofness of this case so badly that it really doesn't matter, but I'd like it to look halfway decent anyway. So, looks like I'm a little bit too far that way with my hole, so I'm gonna um, bring it back this way a little bit, again with the saw blade. Still not quite enough. I think the housings for those are still going to get in the way. I'm just going to change my direction here a little bit and uh, go all the way up to this wall with that cut and open that up even more. I'll tell you the really challenging thing right now is trying to do this and keep it in frame. <laughs> So we're going to pull that blade off for the time being and put on a nice 
coarse cutter to go in and clean that up. Again, watch your speed so that you don't create a bunch of molten plastic. All right, I'm done mucking around with that. And we'll be right back. Okay, so we had a little interruption yesterday. Had some visitors to the shop while I was recording and needed to talk to them. But we're back on the scene and our opening is complete. Looks like we've got plenty of room around there. Um, doesn't look as pretty as I wanted it to, but it, uh, it'll do what we need it to do. So, with the seal gone on the back, it's, it takes a lot of load off this clip, so maybe it won't break quite as easily. And we can see the clearance holes around the lens here that will allow this to get mounted. And we'll do that next. Get this back out of the way. So step one is going to be on the side shot itself. This apparatus that holds the phone, we don't need it anymore. So we can get rid of that. Gonna need these screws. to mount Orion's bracket. And we also need to get these screws out of the way. Don't lose this part, whatever you do. One thing I would like to point out at this point in the assembly is I went to record the uh, part about ordering just a little bit, a bit ago this morning and I noticed that the link that I use to buy the Firefly 8 SE on Amazon uh, when I checked that it said no longer available don't know when they'll be back in stock and that to me screams of a source going dead on Amazon. I did another search and found a different source for it. Um, you know, it's definitely hit or miss with these things from China sometimes. And uh, I was able to find the, uh, the same camera from another outfit on Amazon, but I can't, I can't speak to the validity of it. Now, one thing I do like about ordering on Amazon is I generally feel pretty well protected. Um, I've, I have purchased some shystery stuff from, well, not shystery stuff, but stuff from shysters. And YouTube did back me up and took care of it in a way that I thought was amicable, so... Uh, that's all I'll say on that topic, but AliExpress can be a source for these cameras as well. Just be sure to search for the Hawkeye Firefly 8SE and be sure to get the 90 degree lens, not the 170, which is a wide angle. Otherwise, none of this will work. All right. <clears throat> now, Orion's bracket is on the side shot. Now we need to get at least two of his screws this way. What concerns me is <clears throat> how close these holes are. Well, apparently they're okay. need 
to get this guy in position there. Now, this is important, the relationship of this curve right here to the camera housing needs to go just like this. And some of you may be asking why. And the short answer is that this button, that curve on his housing allows this button to be accessible when it's fully assembled. The only reason I'm using the screwdriver here is because these screws, <clears throat> because these flatheads have a little bit of a clearance problem here, it's pushing the screws out. So the holes line up, but the screws, because of the tension they're on, don't. trick is going to be to get the nut started in there. Now he does have um, <clears throat> the nut shape. Printed in the housing there. So right now I'm trying to back that screw out a little bit. So that I can get that nut back down in that opening. I will say, it is a bit fiddly getting this started and trying to work with a camera right in my face. But we got it. That one has started, and now the rest should be a little easier. You can see that screw right there. Get the rest going. Probably fast forward through this because no one wants to see this man suffer. Okay, there we go, ladies and germs. We have got the case secured to the side shot. We just take our camera, drop it in there like that, and bam, we are installed. I'm pretty sure we won't need this bit on there. But now we have a working camera. Let's see if we can wake it up. Here we go. We're getting there one step closer. Next thing we'll do is take this out on the um, test range and get her lined up. Okay, everybody. Now we're going to take this camera and we're going to adjust the ocular focus on the scope to get the image just right. And I'll show you some of the things that we're going to use to do that according to Orion's original video where he goes over this in really deep detail. And I highly recommend watching his video in addition to this one. Because this one covers some things that he didn't do and his covers some stuff that I have no doubt left out. Anyway, let's take a look. Okay, folks, this is the original side shot right here. This is the image tube. This is Orion's adapter right in here. And this is the Hawkeye Firefly 8SE right here. Now, he uses the ocular focus on the end bell of the scope to get the crosshair and everything just right. So we're going to turn this guy on. And if we look, we can see there's an image on this camera, 
but it's a little small. And he does recommend using the HDMI out to get that image out to a monitor, which I've got set up over here. Now, one thing I will caution you about is this is the cable that came with my inexpensive monitor. And it is really, really thick, really inflexible. And this reducer is enormous. So there's a lot of weight and a lot of length out here on this little connector. And I've actually already damaged this one so that it only works intermittently. But then I found on Amazon a very lightweight, small HDMI cable. It was a little bit more money than uh, some of the bigger, thicker ones. But I think it's really advantageous here because this cable exit does come right back here where your face is. And during this tuning process, you're not going to shoot with this here, so it's not really a problem. But during this tuning process, it does help with getting your face right up to the lens in case you need to find the image and stuff like that. But the process is pretty simple. Using the external monitor, we're just going to loosen these knobs, allow the side shot to move back and forth. And then we're going to adjust the ocular focus, push this back up against it, lock the rings, and then check the image. Now I've got my image pretty good right now, so I'm going to leave it. My sharp hair, my crosshairs are pretty sharp. I'm pretty happy with where this is at. But maybe I'll try and take it just a little bit further and we'll come back and take another peek. Okay. I was able to get just a little bit more clarity out of the crosshair in the image, but I'm pretty happy with where it is right now. Let's see if we can get a peek at some chickens. I'm not going to shoot them. Don't worry. They're actually uh, some of our prize laying hens, but I think it'll make compelling video. Well, that's it, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the video showing the setup of the Hawkeye Firefly 8SE. Uh, remember to get the one with the 90 degree lens, not the wide angle lens. And uh, also watch out for this HDMI cable as well. Um, other than that, follow the instructions I showed you at the beginning and I think you're on your way to getting a really nice, inexpensive, uh, through the lens imager for your scope. And I hear Orion is actually coming out with another thing that will remove the requirement for the side shot altogether. So he's got his own mirror and his own prism setup that'll do the same job. But this was the setup for the original side shot adapter that he has on his website. And I have to say, I thoroughly recommend it. It definitely works better than my tired old Google Pixel 2. XL and it's a lot easier to set up and now I can use my Google Pixel for my FX chronograph on the front of this gun. So win win win. Anyway, thanks for watching. Have a great day and remember be a light in the darkness. It matters. <laughs>